The new Chevy Bolt, I'm looking at it right now. Uh, Chevy promised, well, they promised 255 miles of range. The Bolt actually beats that number. And it is very, very affordable. Guys, I think this could be a, a decent vehicle to look at, especially as a second car in the United States. So what are the details? Well, first of all, guys, if you if you get value from the channel, please click on the link in the description and become a YouTube member because that helps me to continue making these videos because the YouTube payments now have declined significantly due to algorithm changes and yeah, it's having a, a significant effect, I can tell you. Anyway, Chevrolet introduced the 2027 Bolt last fall. Now they've received, well, they've revealed the full car, the full details. The EPA range is actually quite good because this is EPA real world range, 262 miles. That's 422 kilometers. And it's more than GM's estimate of 255 miles or 410 kilometers. The previous Bolt, it's, uh, well, its numbers were 247 miles. So it's um, it's got 15 miles more range than the previous gen Bolt. Despite having more range than before, though, the Bolt does have less range than the Nissan Leaf. Uh, the Nissan Leaf has 303 miles of range. That's 488 kilometers, 66 kilometers more range. But that said, to be fair, uh, the Nissan Leaf is more expensive, particularly with that longer range version. So not really comparable. Anyway, the Bolt um, has some decent features. It's got Super Cruise, semi-autonomous driving, not autonomous, semi-autonomous, of course. And it's got vehicle to home, bi-directional charging capability. So you can power your house in the event of a power outage um, when paired with a General Motors Energy Home System. Just um, important to remember that part of the deal. You've got an 11 inch digital instrument cluster right in front of the driver. There's also an 11.3 inch infotainment system with Google built in. 11.3 inches as an infotainment system is very small in 2026. You can buy Chinese cars for like $3,000 with a 15 inch screen in them. So that, that's on the small side. Uh, anyway, uh, power, it's, Okay, the battery pack, actually, it's probably the most interesting part. It's a, a lithium ion phosphate battery, a 65 kilowatt hour LFP battery. And that feeds an electric motor that produces 157 kilowatt, which is around 210 horsepower. It's got 230 newton meters of torque. That's 169 pound feet. So torque and power aren't huge, but they're definitely enough for a car of this size. DC fast charging, 150 kilowatt fast charging. So it takes 26 minutes to charge from 10 to 80%. It's actually pretty decent charging for a car of this price point. The Bolt is the first Chevy though to have Tesla NAX charging, so a Tesla NAX port. So you've got easy access to Tesla superchargers. That's a, that's a, a big win, I think. The Bolt pricing starts at 29990 That includes destination fees. And they're currently arriving in dealerships, so I think you can buy them now. There will be a cheaper version starting at 29000 or 28995 Both those prices, though, undercut the Nissan Leaf, which starts at 31500 No, I wouldn't buy the Leaf. I'd buy the Bolt over the Nissan Leaf, personally particularly because I think Nissan could um, be bankrupt within a couple of years' time. They are the most likely legacy automaker to go bankrupt. Their debt is rated double double junk. It was junk, and then it was downgraded, downgraded to the, a worse form of junk. So I think General Motors have a, a better chance of sticking around. Uh, Nissan, though, they are bringing out a cheaper version of the Leaf, which will have a smaller battery, a 52 kilowatt hour battery. Apparently, though, um, the Bolt is a limited time model. So General Motors are saying this is a limited run model, only going to last for, don't know. Interesting marketing tactics, isn't it? It's, it's clearly marketing tactics to, say, to tell you this is a limited run car. I don't think that's going to be true, but it could be. You never know. The interior of the Bolt is pretty basic looking, to be honest, but I think it does look pretty good. Uh, CarPlay has been removed, though. It's got no Apple CarPlay. Not that that's a big deal. Um, I'm used to using Apple CarPlay, but to be honest, it's very buggy. I use it in lots of different cars and often it 
I have problems with it for some in different vehicles. And anyway, anyway, the battery cells, by the way, let's talk about those. CATL lithium ion phosphate battery cells. Um, how on earth are General Motors using CATL LFP cells in this car when those are attracting massive tariffs because they are Chinese? Well, first of all, this cell chemistry is pretty rare in EVs in the US, but does have some advantages. For one, you can charge to 100% daily, regularly, no issues at all. In fact, you're recommended to do that. So that is an advantage. And, and the truth is lithium-ion phosphate batteries generally do last longer, have a long, longer life cycle. But realistically, that's probably not going to matter for any of us unless you're planning on buying a car and owning it for 20 years. I don't think anyone really does that. So... In terms of this whole situation with this having LFP batteries from CATL, which is obviously the largest battery company in the world and a Chinese supplier, I'll do a separate video on that, which will go into that and how that's happening and, and get into the sort of the, the details behind the scenes. The Bolt EV, what do you guys think? Would you consider it at these prices? Of course, there's no longer any EV tax credit. If there was, damn, that would bring it down to like 20 just under 22,000 US dollars that would be amazing. But at these prices I still at these prices I still think it's fairly good. It's not a car that I personally would buy as a, even as a second car, but I do think it's worth for a lot of people to consider. It's absolutely worth having a look if you want a, a budget focused vehicle. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. Guys, I am personally with PowerShop for my EV electricity plan. I pay no electricity costs from 12 p.m. to 2 p.m. every day on the EV Day Saver plan. Now, if you're a new customer, you can get a $100 sign-up credit when you make the switch to them. And if you sign up with my referral link, you can also get an additional $75 in credit. So that means you end up with $175 in credit if you choose the PowerShop EV charging plan. Check out my referral link in the description for details.